neat things are happening. Exciting times to be a shooter. Exciting times to be a trigger presser. I love that term. But we're pressers, baby, and we're pressing on. But we, we were defeating oppression. We're defeating communism, socialism, the gun-grabbing godless bastards. Uh, we, we're on our way to preserve our nation in a desperate time. The gutless, gun-grabbing godless bastards can't stop us. Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. And now, your hosts. This episode is brought to you by Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Presser is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, McLean Corporation, ASP, Custom Poker Chip Company, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Meet the Pressers. I'm Matt Mallory and my esteemed co-host, Clint Macro over here, is going to introduce our guests in just a second, but I wanted to give you a little tidbit about what our show is all about. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And we're going to talk about trigger pressers, guests on the show that press triggers. We also talk political activism. We talk about blowing things up, training, education, pretty much anything on the table that our guests want to talk about to bring that knowledge to our viewers and listeners. So without further ado, Clint, take it away. Well, I'm very honored to introduce our guest. This man is, is a, a wonderful educator and developer of sheepdogs and has been doing it for many years. And frankly, one of my influences, one of my main influences, I've read many of his books, been to seminars, and uh, his name is Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman. He is the author of On Killing, On Combat, and, and a whole host of other, other uh, books, and you've got to check out his seminars. But I'm so glad that you're here today, sir, and I look forward to picking your brain. Welcome to Meet the Pressers. Clint, it's my honor, and I, I told you both, and, and uh, you are at the cutting edge of where our civilization is moving. You know, I, I predicted things across the years that have come. I predicted these juvenile mass murders. I predicted the, the college massacres. So, you know, we, we know what's coming down the road. These are frighteningly violent times. The murder rate is being held down by medical technology. Uh, when we look at the murder rate, it's like, it's like comparing money over any period of time. You say, well, he made 50 cents an hour. In today's money, that would be like, like $30 an hour. Mm. And you're lying if you don't allow for inflation. When we look at the murder rate, we're lying if we don't allow for medical technology. I had an honor, of, uh, uh, I went to the White House last August, briefed the vice president, amazing guy, and I told him we have, we have uh, inflation adjusted dollars, we need medically adjusted murder rate. And when we do that, it will absolutely stun you. <laughs> we're in startlingly violent times, three years straight, the homicide rate has exploded in spite of what we're doing to hold it down. Uh, in, in around the year 2000, major UMass Harvard study said if we had 1970s medical technology, the murder rate would be three to four times what it is, and that data is 20 years old. One medical expert says tourniquets alone have, have, have cut the murder rate in half in just the last decade. Cop slaps on a tourniquet, saves a life, he's prevented a murder. So the dynamic of, of how bad it is and how desperately we need our sheepdogs, how how we need to carry and be ready and protect our loved ones. I am my family's secret service, and I am a one-issue voter. Am I, am I a peon? Am I a peasant? Am I a child that needs a nanny state to protect me from harm? Or am I a free citizen who can be trusted with the tools to protect my loved ones? I mean, that's the acid test for any politician and any sane voter. But the one thing that's coming out of this whole coronavirus quarantine, that I can tell you for sure, going to see a lot more sheepdogs. People have suddenly understood the government is not going to always be able to keep me safe. You know, there were lines of liberals at the gun stores that decided I need to go get a gun. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you know, a, 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 a liberal is a conservative that hasn't been mugged yet. You understand? 
well, 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 these guys, these guys are going to get guns. They say, oh, I thought all I had to do is just go buy a gun. No, you got this paperwork, you got this, you got that. Well, that makes no sense. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, they're coming our way. Yep. They're beginning to realize hunting. I've got a book coming out in about a year. It's called On Hunting. Uh, the Psychology, Physiology, and Ecology of the Modern Hunter. Uh, it, we, we, hunting is, is a positive around the world for the locals. We've got this the creature that's about a year away from dying of old age. Uh, dying of old age in nature is a horrible death. You're eaten alive. You linger for days. Creatures eat at your body as you slowly die. Uh, dying of old, of old age in nature is not a good thing. Mm. A clean death at the end of the life cycle. The locals get the meat. The locals get all the money from this crazy guy that's willing to move around the planet to come harvest this thing for us. Uh, and, and everybody wins. And we're seeing that as an ecological model. We know Ducks Unlimited. Uh, here in America has done more for conservation mm -hmm. than just about anybody else put together. And, and so we got that coming out, hunting, training, carrying. This is our future. And you and the magnificent sheepdogs who listen to your show, you are at the cutting edge of, of, of a growth industry. And, and, and that's one message I want to point to, believe in who you are, believe in what you're doing, the nation, our way of life, desperately needs what you have to give. So who are to the old trigger presses out there doing the great job uh, awesome. in these, these violent and, and scary times? So you, you, uh, you had mentioned to us in the past that you have a product that the sheep does can use to fend off those wolves. So what kind of product do you and your son have there in your, uh, mm -hmm. in your mitts? Well, you know, uh, we, our, our gun business is sheepdogknifeandgun.com. Just spell it out sheepdogknifeandgun.com that brings you our website we got about a half a dozen patents to our name nice we're, we're doing some really neat stuff huh? but what we did we bought the last of the daytonics and and their slides and frames and we're using them to make the first of the sheepdog guns uh, these are instant collectors items i, I shoot every gun uh, extensively uh, I, I, it comes with the target signed by me with five groups uh, five good groups and uh, and everything locked in and, and checked out my son is a master gunsmith. Uh, we've really become a part of, uh, of a, a firearms revolution I want to talk to you about. And that's Hujitsu, the martial art of the firearm. I grew up with the martial arts. I love the dojo. I love discipline and structure and martial arts. I turned 18 in 1974. I joined the army and my martial art became the rifle and the pistol. Hujitsu has been put together by a uh, uh, a, a remarkable guy with the, with the credentials of the right people in Japan. He resurrected the, the martial art of the firearm, which would have been shut down in the 1800s. And, uh, uh, and uh, you shoot for your belt. Uh, and I, uh, I thought it was good. I'm a gun side grad, a front side grad, military trained, uh, do a little competitive shooting. I barely made brown belt by the skin of my teeth. I trained for two years to make my black belt. I knew what time hacks I was missing. I knew what shots I had to make. And, uh, and I got my black belt. And now I get to do a little teaching. We, we got one coming up in uh, Indiana in July. I'll be uh, guest instructing on top of what's happening. But we do these three-day weekends. The guy that founded it, a fellow named uh, Jeff Hall. He was a ranger in Vietnam right at the very end of the war. Uh, so just a few years older than me. He is uh, uh, a high-level martial artist in multiple skills. He's the most decorated uh, 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 Alaska State Trooper, one of only about 30 grandmaster pistol shots on the planet, a supernatural shot, astounding trainer. So hujitsu.com, H-O-J-U-T-S-U.com. Uh, and, and check it out and show up one of the three-day uh, weekends going around uh, and, and, and push that envelope in training. I'm Jara Hutchins with Clearing the Chamber, and this is Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Macro. Meet the Pressers. One of the things that I've learned from you, and uh, actually I first heard about this in one of, I think the first time I saw you uh, was one of your shortened seminars that you put on at an NRA annual meeting. Yeah. But one thing that has vastly improved my life was striving to get better sleep. Taking a little bit of melatonin, covering up all those little blue LED lights in my bedroom, making it cave dark. And that was a huge, huge influence on my ability to, you know, have a clear mind. I think I retain information better. 
Uh, would you like to speak yeah. a little more on that, on how good proper sleep is a, is a great thing for a family first responder? Uh, it, it's such a critical dynamic. Now, the thing to wrap your mind around is this. Uh, we're in the middle of a worldwide epidemic of sleep deprivation. Uh, video games, cell phones, text messaging, social media, and, and, and it's killing us. Uh, and it's killing our children. Uh, the, the thing to wrap your mind around right up front is 18 hours without sleep and your impaired judgment equal to 0.08 legally drunk. Hmm. 24 hours without sleep, your impaired judgment equal to 0.10 above legally drunk. If somebody showed up your range drunk, you would kick his tail and ban him for life. Yeah. They show up your range sleep deprived because they play games all night long. They need to be talked to. They need to be have their head straight and their heart straight. You know, I, I train all of our military, train cops in all 50 states. I was working with the Marine Corps in Quantico a while back, and the Marines going through uh, training there. They, they train them hard. They push them hard across the Marine Corps, and they do a sleep deprivation. But if they're going to be on the range the next day, it is absolutely mandatory that their young Marines get enough sleep the night before they get to the range. A sleep deprivation in guns is right up there with alcohol in guns. Mm -hmm. When we're trainers, this, we're blind to this. We don't see this. And, and I'll give you an angle on this too. And, and you, you've, heard, you've heard that 22 veterans a day take their life. Yeah. And, and best we can tell that's accurate. But the thing to understand is the word veteran means anybody who served in the armed forces. That veteran and combat that are two different things. Yep. And in the, in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, right up until just the year before I graduated, right up until the early 70s, we drafted everybody. Elvis Presley was drafted. Elvis was a veteran. So most of these 22 veterans a day taking their life are, are 90, 80, 70 year old men. And one suicide, one too many, every life is precious. But they want you to think it's all from the current war. And it's not. But let's go back to suicide. Suicide is up everywhere. Every group, every socioeconomic group, every nation on the planet, suicide has exploded. In the military, in the active duty military, our suicides have nothing to do with combat. But a sleep deprived soldier can be up to five times more likely to take their life. So here's, to take your life is not a natural act. You have to have profoundly impaired judgment to take your life. Alcohol and suicide have always been closely related. Alcohol creates impaired judgment. You make a bad decision. Never get a chance to rethink it. But this epidemic of sleep deprivation is tied in with the epidemic of suicide. So here's parenting 101 for the 21st century. Teen suicide has exploded. Teen traffic deaths have exploded. When you send your kid to bed at night, take their cell phone away from them. No cell phone in the room, no laptop in the room. They got to get a good night's sleep. So a cop came up to me during one of the breaks. He said, I had a good girl. He said, she was an A student. She said, dad, it's embarrassing. You don't have to take your cell phone every night. You can trust me. He said, so I trusted her. A little while later, she took her life. He said, my little girl took her life. And, and, and I never knew the hell she was living in until we looked at the text messages on her cell phone. Ceaseless, relentless, vicious bullying. And it is a scientific fact that people will say things in a text message, in an email, yep. they would never do face to face. Yep. I use the analogy, you're walking down the street and you bump into somebody, what do you do? You're, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, pardon me. But you're driving down the road and you cut somebody off, you're like, yeah! <laughs> And, and she was up all night long trying to defend herself. You can't just ignore that stuff. You're not worried of me. He says, I knew my little girl was bullied to death. What I didn't understand until now, she was sleep deprived, tormented, and bullied to death in front of my eyes, and I let it happen. He said, I can't ignore that text message in the middle of the night. How, how can we expect our kids to? All right, he said, all right. the one thing on earth I could have done for my little girl was take her cell phone every night. Let her turn off all the bad stuff in this world. So just understand it. And one other thing is the opiate epidemic. Prescription opiates have always been there. Why are they suddenly the drug of choice? Sleep deprivation creates chronic pain. 
the tendons and muscles never have a chance to fully relax. And caffeine prevents us from getting deep cycle sleep. And then the, the muscles you know, never get a chance to relax. Doc, I heard all the time, give me a pill fix. You don't need a pill, you need more sleep. Yeah. And you need to knock off the caffeine shortly after lunch. It's stopping you from getting good quality sleep. And as we get a little older, a little mini dose of melatonin is a pretty good idea. Uh, it's, it's a longevity drug, it's, it's dirt cheap. Just a little mini dose as we get older, Babies can sleep anywhere. Babies are sloshing with melatonin. By the time we become teenagers, we have much less melatonin. And your teenager needs to sleep in a truly dark room. And so do you. Yeah. yeah we you black out it. all the windows and I, I wear a I wear an eye mask and yeah. I'll even put I'll even put earplugs in because my wife yes. snores. Yes. And, and 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 that eye mask and teach your children to sleep in the dark. As we get older and older, the body produces less and less melatonin, and the more important those things are. So, so these are simple things we're doing right now. Sleep in a truly dark room and add the eye mask. The combination is dynamite. We're issuing those to our troops by the fiscal. Look like the wrong way without the eye holes out there, you know? And, <laughs> and sleep deprivation makes you five times more likely to take your life. It makes you far more likely to have a traffic accident, and it impairs your judgment in life and death situations. The three major killers of our kids have all exploded. Worldwide, these three major killers have exploded. Suicides, traffic deaths, and drug overdoses. And the new factor that we need to be aware of for ourselves, our families, that for our wellness, for our survival, is, is sleep deprivation. You know, the other component that I talk about in resiliency is faith. Uh, a book came out just a little over a year ago. I, might, when I was co-author called uh, Bulletproof Marriage, 90 Day Devotional. And, and, and look it up on Amazon. We're, we're so pleased. Let's, a little over a year, over 100 five-star reviews. Five stars on Amazon is like a 4.0 GPA. You know, one B and you never get it back. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and look at some of the reviews because it's sheepdog and spouse. A sheepdog can mean anybody who who's, carries a gun, who's got the right mindset. The sheepdog is a broad term military, first responders, and any other buddy who cares, and spouse. And it's a 90-day devotional, and it is rocking people's world. It, awesome. it is a finalist. It's just biggest, one of the biggest things ever happened. It's a finalist for the Christian Book Award for this year. We'll find out who the winner is. Just being a finalist of, among all the thousands of titles is an incredible achievement. Well, That's the great. next book that's coming out uh, next week is on spiritual combat. In the end, we're fighting a war against evil. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and cops, first responders, military, they have seen evil. Mm -hmm. They know there is evil in this world. And if you recognize evil and you don't take advantage of a force of good on your side, how can you, how can you recognize evil and deny God mm -hmm. and, and a force of good in our civilization? How can you fight evil? without tapping into a, a superior force of good. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah. So uh, on LinkedIn, and, and link with me on LinkedIn or my Facebook page, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman Facebook page, uh, I'm posting a set of memes for this book. And they're, they're visuals with the text woven in. You gotta love them. <laughs> there's, there's some great visuals in there that'll warm your heart and warm your soul. It's about sheepdogs under the authority of the great shepherd, fighting back to back, finding good, godly, virtuous, uh, people to watch your six and come your back. So uh, uh, you know, the, the, the latest book coming out again. Uh, uh, and, and the other book, of course, I recommend, Flint, I'm honored you held it up there, is, uh, is on combat. How could we have had 500 years of gunpowder combat and not let people know, hey, the shots will probably get muted in combat? I mean, think about that. Five stinking centuries of gunpowder combat and we're just not letting people know, hey, you know, the shots are probably getting muted in quiet and combat. That's normal. Tunnel vision, uh, uh, auditory exclusion, slow motion time. I have had hundreds of people tell me they can see the bullet in combat. It, it's like airsoft or paintball. It's slow if you attract the eyes, and I believe them. Yep. On three occasions, they walked up and pointed where the bullet hit. Nowhere they could have done it. They weren't tracking the rise like they said they were. I, I mean, memory gaps, memory distortions, all of this stuff meets every definition of a psychotic episode. And they're the things that happen to people in combat. We need to know it's in the book on combat. And then the aftermath things, aftermath dynamics. And 
you go on that roller coaster ride of adrenaline again. That is not PTSD. It's normal. That's how you deal with that roller coaster ride. Decide whether or not it becomes post traumatic stress disorder. That's all in on combat. All of your listeners out there, well, I got a son with nine combat tours, uh, three bronze stars. God bless him. Wow. And uh, the book I literally wrote for my kid going to the fight, The Invasion of Afghanistan, where the early drafts of the book uh, was on combat, uh, issued in the DA Academy, issued in the Marshall Academy, Marine Corps Commandant's Required Reading. And all you uh, trigger pressers out there, all you great sheepdogs, all you great American heroes out there, the one book that I, I would ask you to take a look at is on combat, get your head and heart right. So we want you to survive physically, spiritually, psychologically, and legally. And if one out of five trained seasoned cops had memory distortions, yeah. if half of all trained seasoned cops have memory gaps, how much more so could it happen to you? Yeah. The day any major police department on the planet, if the cops in a shooting, the union rep shows up immediately, a lawyer shows up immediately, yep. and we do not make a full statement Exactly. immediately after the incident. His memory gaps, his memory distortions, you put that on paper, you got to live with that. Yep. Tell them, I was in fear for my life, I used deadly force, and I want to talk to my the lawyer. That's what, that's what happens to police departments and major, uh, uh, major departments nationwide. Yeah. The no unit different. shows up. Should be no different and, for civilians. Yeah, and, and it is the law in Texas, common sense everywhere else, the cop has the right to see every video before they make their statement. Memory gaps, memory distortions, you make a statement, they look at the video, he's lying. No, he's not lying. But I got to live with that in court. Scientific truth, but yet they still think that they're lying. Yeah, that's, that's a, so it's an attorney play. Don't get yourself in that situation. Yep. Think very carefully about what you're going to say at the moment of truth. I'll even yeah. say to people, like, if, if uh, you know, if somebody asks to search their vehicle and they're like, well, I have nothing to hide. Well, you don't know if you have anything to hide. You won't know until that officer finds something like maybe a prescription pill on, on the floorboard of your car that was from your kid's ADD medicine bottle and they missed their mouth and just said, ah, you know, yeah. I got more. I'm a cop. I'm a reserve cop. And mm -hmm. every cop I know, I'll tell you, if somebody asks me, do you mind if I search your car? No. <laughs> if they're a cop and they ask, it's no. But I, I, I'm not going to let you search my car. Right. And would you let somebody search your car? And when you ask them honestly, no, they wouldn't do it. Right. You know, and again, thank God for stupid criminals. Thank God for <laughs> stupid criminals. <laughs> who have a car full of drugs who say, no, no, I ain't got nothing to hide. You know, they, they, and they let them search the car. Thank God for stupid criminals. But yeah. But, but don't be a stupid good guy. I'm Master Ken, and you're watching Meet the Pressers with Matt McClintock and uh, Clint uh, Macron. Meet the Pressers. Going back to uh, on yeah. combat, uh, I also have done, and I've recommended this to a lot of people that maybe don't have the time to sit down and read the book, but Grossman Academy, the online class. So, I thought yeah. that was a tremendous value. And you had updated it and added a few extra things like stats oh, and things in it that weren't oh, yeah. in the book. Yeah, GrossmanAcademy.com, www.grossmanacademy.com. There's an online class, semester credit hours, uh, you know, in-service credit hours, uh, online class for on combat. Follow, get an e-copy of the book, lots of video, lots of audio, follow it all the way through. And then uh, another one for on killing, which again is on the Marine Corps Commandant's required reading list. It's a darn good book, but it, it's more academic. Uh, on combat is the nuts and bolts of what we need when the rubber hits the road. But those two classes, GrossmanAcademy.com, are, are doing some amazing things. Thanks for mentioning that, Clint. You know, so many balls out there. I kind of forget. I <laughs> We've had lots of great guests on the show. And, and the one overwhelming, consistent thread that I see with people that are leaders and big uh, businessmen is they've got lots of balls out there, lots of balls in the air and lots of things that they're doing. And I think that's great because ultimately we all want to help empower our fellow citizens and help them because, you know, my neighbor being well regulated in the true sense of what that means makes m my family safer. Absolutely. You know, a, a guy said one time, you know, I've been doing this for 23 years. And so the reason why Grossman keeps going is he's diversified. You know, I teach schools. I train uh, house, house of worship security teams. Uh, we're, with this new book coming out, uh, starting about the fall, we hope to start up some uh, sheepdog uh, spiritual warfare seminars. Not just, not the sheepdog gun toters, but you know, everybody who's a sheepdog under the authority of the great shepherd, the great prayer warrior, the 
you know, the grandmother on her knees praying for her son in Chicago, for her son in Korea can be one of the greatest forces on the planet. And she's a sheepdog in, in spiritual warfare for her grandson. You know, so uh, but, but we do it in the, in the military, it's called recon pull. You know, when the, the general draws an arrow on the map and says, we're going down that axis. Uh, that's kind of stupid. What we do is send it our recon. And if these guys are successful, reinforce that. So be diversified. Look at every different angle of what you're doing out there. It's a military strategy, mm -hmm. you know, then, and, uh, and we send out these, these dynamics. We try this, we try that, that works. We do more of it. That doesn't work. We let go of it. Uh, and it's all about that being diversified. All of us, these are hard times, you know, training dollars are down, speaking dollars are down. Uh, make this an opportunity to, to start a podcast or to be on a podcast. Make this the opportunity to write that book. That was on Cheryl Todd's show. And do we talk specifically about that? Uh, she has an American, Clint was on as well, uh, American segment. We're talking about what Americans can do to, you know, to work against the coronavirus. And, and Are you an American I, or an American? Yes, I love exactly. I, feel that. Yeah. And I, I stole it from a movie, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, I actually talked about the, uh, the Bible and how the Bible says that you should have multiple income sources and multiple ways of, of producing income because there's evil in the world and some sources can dry up. So multiple revenue streams. Yeah, you know, be diversified. Yep. The top 20 most violent nations on the planet have unarmed citizens. In Mexico, how, how are the gun laws working out for Mexico right now? How's that all working out? How do these people claim that gun laws going to work when Mexico is a model of how it doesn't work? Well, hell, we've got we've got stats on that here in in the United States. When you look at cities like Chicago, you know, the murder rate in New York has doubled. New York City has doubled over this time frame. Meanwhile, Miami has had no murders during this time frame. I mean, virtually no more is the longest time frame they've seen. What's the difference between New York City and Miami? You know, it, you get this dynamic of unarmed citizens. You get this dynamic of, of predators who are on the prowl and know you can't fight back. Meanwhile, uh, those of us who have the right to protect our loved ones, those of us who live in, in right-thinking nations, as, especially if we have castle law, uh, we were even more empowered to protect ourselves and protect our loved ones. So to have faith in our way of life, you know, we were, we were, when 9-11 happened, we only had uh, around a dozen shall issue concealed carry states. Today, about 43 are shall issue concealed carry, and the, the remaining seven are, are coming unglued. Uh, they're just a, a, a dysfunctional model of what we should not be doing in, in our nation today. Indeed. And, and you know, concealed carry is a one-way ratchet. It's never gone in and come back out again. You've seen it. Concealed carry goes in. There'll be bloodshed. There'll be there'll be carnage. There'll be death in the streets. You'll be you'll see this law will come out. Never once. And 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 I do a lot of work in California, county by county in California. They're firing sheriffs who won't give them concealed carry permits. So if you live in Fresno or Bakersfield or Sacramento, and you want a concealed carry permit, you got it right now, and it's a state permit. You can carry in downtown San Francisco and LA. But if you live in LA, San Diego, San Francisco, you'll never get a concealed care permit. Right. Now the guy from, from Bakersfield can carry down your street, but you can't. Now tell me that doesn't create some some political tension. Mm -hmm. It's tell the me? same here in New York. It's the same same thing here in New York. New York City, you can get a license, but it's very uncommon, and that license is good anywhere in the state, but upstate or Long Island, if you get a license, it's not good in the city. Isn't that something? It's yeah. crazy. And so that creates this political tension. And, and you know, when, when we see, we've kind of got three dynamics in our nation. We've got liberal, conservative, and libertarian. And we all fall somewhere within that triangle. Mm -hmm. When two out of three are on the same side, it really is an unstoppable force. And the libertarian and the conservative, if you will, are both deeply uh, uh, invested in gun rights. And any politician, especially at the national level, that does support gun rights is, is going to be destroyed. It is, it is a lose-lose proposition to think you'll get to national office in America running against guns. So I have prayer for this next election, pray that I'm right, but I think the dynamics are all lining up for, for us to be able to continue. You know, And anytime you're, you're worried about our nation, anytime you're pulling your hair out about what's happening in America, take a deep breath and say, 
Hillary is not the president. <laughs> there you what, go. What difference does yeah. it make at this point? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then say Gorsuch, Kavanaugh. Gorsuch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say right. it three times. And have faith. <laughs> have faith in our nation. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I think I think one of the very positive things that I, I really believe is going to take place uh, at the end of this current crisis with COVID is I think people are going to remember what politicians were limiting their individual rights and liberties yeah. and destroying yeah. their business and, and all of that when it comes election time. Yeah. And I really believe that to be the case, not to mention all the new concealed carriers that we have that maybe in January and February might even have been anti-gun and today and, they're gun owners yes and, and all those gun owners are, are becoming you know like i said it's true you know a a, a, a liberal is a conservative that hasn't been mugged yet right and all those people that are coming around to realizing self-sufficiency to be able to provide food for my family be able to protect my family what's that sound like to you an american right yeah. they're not there american you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And, and i believe with all my heart there's almost you can almost apply the laws of physics to politics. And okay. any extreme push in one direction will create an extreme push in the opposite direction. Yeah. This business of shutting down businesses, shutting down your daily travel, that it, it's not constitutional. From one end to the other, shutting down churches, uh, there will be a backlash of enormous magnitude. We've seen yeah. who are going to treat us like children and who are going to treat us like adults. And we, we've seen an acid test in our nation and and, uh, and we have 50 laboratories for democracy. Take a pick which one do you want to live in right now. It's a no-brainer. So I have faith in our nation. Have faith that we got great men like you and, and, and Clint and Matt out there fighting for what's right, carrying that gun, seeking that training, uh, making our nation a better and stronger place. You got to believe in who you are, folks. The world needs what you got to give more than ever. Your family needs you Amen. to prepare for, for the bad things because we now know, without a doubt, bad things can happen. Very true. Well, Colonel, it's been uh, it's been awesome having you on. For yeah, sure, amazing. All right, it's, it's always a pleasure, guys. And uh, uh, you know, I, I I'm really a big fan of the of the podcast dynamic. I I've been uh, doing this for 23 years, and that's my prayer. I can do it for another 20 years. I'm 63 years old. Uh, my bride of 44 years is waiting at home for me. Uh, I get home one, maybe two nights a week. A comfortable visit, clean underwear, back in. <laughs> <laughs> The only people on earth more precious than my bride. Uh, she was uh, she was 15 when I proposed to her. I was 17. Uh, we are from Arkansas. And, uh, <laughs> two years later, she married a crazy army paratrooper. Love her more than life itself. But the only people on earth more precious is our grandchildren. And we believe if we love our nation, if we love our God, if we love our way of life, if we love our children, if we love our grandchildren, we'll walk out that door and give 100%. And every day that somebody wants to hear what I got to give, every day that I got the health to do it, I'm going to walk out that door and do it. Because the most powerful motivation on the planet is love. And the crazy thing about love is, the worse it gets, the more determined you are to give it all you got. Sure. And, and these are scary times, and they motivate us to man the ramparts of our civilization, to answer the summons of the trumpet, to stand in the gap and be counted in a dark and desperate time. They're the worst of times, they're the best of times. But uh, it's my prayer I can be out there doing it uh, for another 20 years. If God could bring me home tomorrow. What do you think you're complaining about? If, if I get there first, I'll save you a place by the fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, very appreciated. Cool. Stay hard, brother. Stay safe. Yep. And uh, keep your powder dry and be a presser. Oh. Right. God bless. Thank you. My pleasure. Hey, I'm Larry Vickers of Vickers Tactical, and this is Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Macro. There's a lot of sponsors that make this show possible, like Mantis. Make sure you check them out and give them your business. This episode is brought to you by Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Pressers is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, McLean Corporation, ASP, Custom Poker Chip Company, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, click the little bell, 
Come on Patreon, help support us that way. Come to one of our classes or host us. We can come to you and do one of our courses at your location. So until next time, adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers. 